Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks and Keith and today I'm going to do something that is a bit of an American bar classic. I'm going to make toasted ravioli or tea ravs. This was requested by Russell Gibbon and um, well I've never heard of it before. <laughs> I just haven't. Um, but he does recommend it and he says it's dead easy and he's Give me a recipe, which I'm not going to follow exactly, because that's what I do. So, tea ravs were invented in St. Louis by, well, one of two restaurants, both lay claim to it. And what it is, it's just ravioli coated in breadcrumbs and fried, not toasted. But they called it toasted because they thought fried ravioli didn't sound very good. Anyway, they sound delicious and I can't wait to try them. And also, I forgot, I'm going to make some tomato sauce possibly marinara sauce to go with it. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is between marinara and tomato. A marinara, to me, it sounds like it should have seafood in it, but um, no. If you enjoy this video, press like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, ding dong, etc. And let's get on with it. Fried ra <laughs> Toasted ravioli. Okay, first thing, ravioli. Undoubtedly, the best thing to do is buy it ready-made. Uh, you know, fresh or frozen, but um, I couldn't get it. I could get those little tortelloni, tortellini things and other things, but I couldn't get rav because, and it's important that you use ravioli because of the shape. So I'm going to make my own. I'm not making my own pasta. I could do that, but I'm not going to. I've got sheets of lasagna pasta. So what I need to do first is soften those so I can mess about with them. And other ingredients, I've got a handful of spinach, which will finish up as like a thimbleful when I've cooked it, some ricotta and some parmigiano. Okay, so the lasagna sheets need to be boiled and so do the spinach leaves. I reckon I can get four rabs out of each sheet of lasagna pasta. So I'm just gonna pop five sheets into the water just to soften them and to part cook them. The box doesn't tell you how long it takes to cook, but I expect it to be like 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna give it five. And I maybe should have used a bigger pan. They're a little bit crowded in there. You wanna make sure they don't stick together because they will if you give them a chance. And when they've had their five minutes, take them out and uh, I'm gonna put them on some greaseproof paper, not uh, kitchen paper, because that will stick to it. Let them cool down and sort of dry off a bit. Now I'm gonna pop this back on the stove and put the spinach in just for a couple of minutes for it to wilt and then we'll drain it in the colander. And then we pop it in a bowl of cold water. I'll squeeze it out and get rid of as much moisture as I can. I'm gonna try and cut this into little bits because we don't want massive leaves of spinach in our rabs. I'm gonna mix the spinach with some ricotta and the parmesan. Just for the record, that was a 250 gram pot of ricotta and I've used about half of it. Uh, now I'm gonna taste the filling. That's nice, it's kind of weird at first, but then it grows on you. <laughs> right, I'm gonna make the tomato sauce. So I've got a can of chopped tomatoes. I've got a half teaspoon of onion granules, half teaspoon of garlic granules teaspoon of oregano and a teaspoon of round basil. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> also possibly some black pepper and maybe some salt and maybe other things. So this really is a cheat tomato sauce. Normally you would want to simmer it and build up flavour over a matter of hours, um, but I'm going to do it in about 15 minutes. It will still be fantastic. So chuck everything in the pan bring it to the boil and then let it turn it down, let it simmer for about 15 minutes. If it's too thick, add some water. Okay, I'm going to make some ravioli. So you want a dollop of filling, a small dollop. It's very tempting to put too much in, but if you do, you'll know about it because it will escape at the sides. And I'm going to moisten the edges and fold it over and press, just press it down. 
So the tomato sauce is ready. I've added two teaspoons of dark brown muscovado sugar and half teaspoon of salt and half teaspoon of ground black pepper. And it's nice. It's, it's a bit chunky. If you like it smoothly, you can whiz it with a stick blender. If you like it ultra smooth, you can then pass it through a sieve with the back of a spoon. But I'm keeping it chunky. Actually with these later ones, the pasta's dried out a bit and um, it will stick to itself without any need for water. That's good news. Okay, I'm ready to fry the ravioli. So what you want to do is get two bowls, beaten egg, that's actually two eggs and some breadcrumbs. <laughs> coat it in egg and then coat it in crumbs. Try to use one hand for wet stuff and <laughs> the other for dry. So that's half a dozen done and now I'm going to do them again. So they're double coated and they're extra crispy. So we're going to fry the ravioli and you need a couple of centimetres, about an inch of oil in a frying pan. I'll do them in batches, I'm going to do six at a time I think they'll fit okay without being too crowded. When the oil is hot carefully lower your ravioli in and um, they just need a couple of minutes until they're golden brown and then they're done. Then take them out and drain them on kitchen paper. Okay I'm nearly done. I did the first batch of six and we tasted them and two observations. The first one it lacked salt, can you believe? So for the remaining ones, I've added salt to the breadcrumbs. The other one was I double coated it with the crumbs. It's like, you know, when you get a cheap pie or pasty and it's all pastry, the pastry's not even very nice, but you've got to chomp through all of that and then you find a little bit of disappointing filling in the middle. I mean, the filling wasn't disappointing, but at the, uh, all the breadcrumbs and that was just too much. So for the rest of them, just a single coating of egg and crumb. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Court. Hi guys. Hi. Food. Yeah. Tea ravs. Tea ravs. Toasted ravioli. Yeah. Yeah. And. Homemade tomato sauce. Oh yeah. And shop bought mayo. Mmm, <laughs> crunchy. Mmm. Munchy. That's nice actually. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. And vegetarian. Mm. See what I did there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a bit sceptical because Keith made some before and what was it you did? Did you do double, double Oh, the first batch, yeah. Crunchy I've told stuff. them all about that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was just too much. Mm. Yeah. Mm. This it's, is much better. This is much better. Because I just thought, well, you know, maybe it's one of those things if you're homesick for your old boys back in St. Louis, you'd go to the trouble of making these. But um, <laughs> otherwise, no. But yeah, it's all right, that. Oh, and it's still well crunchy. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. As a deep fried breadcrumb coated thingy treat. It's good. <laughs> I just think that deep fried coated breadcrumbs are just overrated. They put on everything nowadays. I mean, ravioli. Mars bar. Oh no, that's batter. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So yeah, do you think they're worth the effort? No, I'm serious. No, yeah. If I'd got pre-made ravioli, yes, definitely. Because mm -hmm. um, then it's dead easy. You just... I get crumb it and fry it. Done. But would you get a decent quantity of filling in it? Mm, get what you pay for, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for watching and see you all next time.